Um, hi, I'm Stephanie Carbajal, and this is my husband, Nick Carbajal, and we are bringing our perspective on chapters, Judges chapters 10 and 11. And so in the beginning of chapter 10, it talks about how the father raised up a man out of Issachar's tribe um, to deliver Israel. And so he was Israel's champion for over 20 years. Um, and then once again, the Israelites turned to their evil ways, serving other gods. So because of this, they were sold into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites, um, where they were oppressed for the next 18 years. And in the time of um, their most trouble, they once again cried out to God and asked God to rescue them. And they threw themselves at his mercy and asked for forgiveness. And God's response was, like, I already saved you, I freed you, but you continue to go back to your other gods. Like, ask your other gods to save you. I'm not saving you anymore. Where are your other gods? Um, that's kind of my translation of that. Um, however, so they continuously pleaded with God and confessed their sins. But this time, they got rid of those foreign gods that they served. And then they served the Lord. And then that is when God rescued them. Um, this part really resonated with me because it wasn't until the Israelites got rid of their false gods and served the Lord that God rescued and um, God actually rescued them. So I want to encourage you today that if you are really struggling continuously with that same sin, um, to just really try to get rid of it completely so that way um, you can experience everything that the Lord has for you. So that kind of is my um, synapse of chapter 10 and nice. all right amen amen <laughs> all right chapter 11 starts out with Jephthah and his birth and how he's birthed from an illegitimate person so the true the lit legitimate sons which are born after that from um uh, Elise's actual wife actually drive him out of the home and he ends up running for his life and fleeing and settling in the land of Tob which means good and other people who are either driven out it only says vain people or scoundrels or other translations say worthless. Um, but all these people are get, people gathered around him and he actually led those people. They followed him, um, which, you know, teaches you a little bit about some of the gifts God gives you even in your hard times, in your hardships. They don't go away. So that's always a blessing to know. Um, however, he's then approached later on by... Sorry, that was a fly. Um, we're outside. And, uh, <laughs> Greg. Oh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> Jephthah is approached by the elders of Yuli later on because the Ammonites are starting to persecute them and fight against them, and they have no way to defeat them. So they come to him and his people for help, and they say, be our captain and help us defeat the Ammonites. And his first question is, why would you even ask me? You hate me. You drove me out. Well, since that happened, what they ended up doing was making a covenant in front of the Lord saying that you will be our captain after this. Basically, you do this for us and you'll be the head of us. So what ended up happening was he went and started to use diplomacy to reach out to the Ammonite king, telling him this is our land. This was the Amorites, but it was given by our God, in which we won by conquest. And you have no right or claim to this land. And the Ammonite king just didn't even pay no attention. So the spirit of the Lord came upon him and that's when he led his people into war. But prior to going into war, he decided to put a little bit more on that and said, God, if you give me these people in, in, in war, in battle, I will come back and give you the first sacrifice and a burnt offering, the first thing that comes out of my house on my return. Well, they go to war. God already knew they were going to be victorious. They won the war. He came back home. The trumpet sound, and his daughter runs out to greet him. Well, that broke his heart because... He didn't want to sacrifice his daughter, but she was the first one to come out of his home. Now, a lot of scholars argue about whether he really did that or not. However, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says they're not allowed to sacrifice anything or anyone. So, um, either she was allowed to live after her two months of mourning for her virginity, or she was cremated after she passed away. I really don't know how it was done. However, what I got from the book was... Even though the Spirit of the Lord can be upon us, we can still add to that things that aren't from the Lord. So we need to be very careful 
in what we promise to God. Um, God has already won the fight. He's already victorious in everything he gives us. He gives us everything beyond what we can fathom. So for me, at least, I know me personally, I had to be really careful not to give things um, or offer up things to God in which I have no business offering. Everything I have is already his. So what he chooses to do with that is at his discretion. So for me, I just wanted to encourage people that when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us, just be diligent and obedient to the Spirit. Amen. There's no need for us to add any of our humanity to it. And that's basically it. So we hope you're blessed by this yeah. synopsis. Thank we you. Thank you for the opportunity to share. And God bless you.